Um, I would hope that the visitors who come to the show will come away realizing that the solar system uh, is, is far more visually fascinating than they might have thought before they enter. Um, and also, um, you know, I believe that the show uh, positions the Earth as part of a much larger uh, archipelago, you know, of, filled with landscapes. So our landscapes, our earthly landscapes, fit into a much wider suite, let's say, uh, of landscapes. So I hope people would come away feeling like, my God, you know, we, have, we know a lot more about the solar system than I thought, and, uh, and it's, a, it's an incredibly uh, beautiful place. My choices for this show, all these pictures are chosen based on aesthetic considerations. I wasn't interested in documenting scientific phenomena, although many of the pictures, of course, do. I and mean, when I say scientific phenomena, phenomena of interest to science, um, what I'm doing with the show is I am making the case that the, the, the visual legacy of 50 years of robotic space probe photography belongs as much to photography as it does to science. I'm very interested in scientific inquiry, and I write about it. I'm a science writer. Uh, so the text part of my books deals with that. But when it comes to the choices uh, I make for the, for the exhibition and for, for my books, it's based on aesthetic considerations. They have to be powerful. They have to be evocative in some way. This is my favorite single image from the entire Beyond project um, because I think it's, it's truly the most... Um, evocative in a way, uh, and, and also alien in a way. Um, it, it conjures up science fiction images of, of, of Jupiter, and yet it's absolutely accurate to what, what was taking place. It's, fo it's, it's photorealist. Um, this is uh, a composite of many, many individual Voyager frames of Jupiter. Um, and originally, I just found uh, uh, one shot that had a piece of Europa, that's an ice covered moon of Jupiter. Uh, I, I found a, a shot of cloudscapes with a piece of Europa sticking into it, and I, I got very excited, and then I found neighboring frames, and for about six months, I, I had, a, as my screensaver, I had a much smaller image than this with Europa over the clouds, and I thought that was cool enough for me, you know. But then it occurred to me to go back and, um, and find, you know, see if there were any more neighboring frames, and, and I discovered that, that, in fact, Europa was orbiting above the Great Red Spot, which is a gigantic storm on Jupiter that has been, we, we've known of it for 300 years. We don't know how long it's been raging, but it's certainly the longest lived storm we've ever seen. Um, when I discovered that the Great Red Spot was actually uh, in the uh, emerging image, you know, uh, I realized I'd, I'd found something. Uh, and there's another reason that I really like this image, which is that Europa is the single most enigmatic, at least to me, the single most enigmatic object in the solar system. It's an ice-covered global ocean. Uh, the ice is not that thick in relation to the size of the ocean. Uh, it's about like a grape skin. Uh, and there's plenty of evidence to suggest that the, the, the ocean has been liquid for millions of years. So many of the conditions, I mean, we believe all the conditions for life, necessary for life, are, are present on Europa. And the question is, is there life there? Um, so, I find that moon to be a tantalizing and, and fascinating place, and I think we should be re devoting more resources to investigating it.